welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is AP Calculus. We are working through the Finney Demano Waits Kennedy Calculus book uh, in the middle of chapter four, and we're just going to do a quick little video on Newton's method. Uh, Newton's method, and uh, just a quick disclaimer: a couple of the examples will be coming directly from the book. Uh, Newton's method is a a way, a procedure to approximate a zero, and in basically the gist of it is you use linearization to find that zero, and we use that linearization repeatedly. And you will recall that linearization is really all about finding the equation of a line, uh, specifically equation of a tangent line, and we keep referring back to this, uh, which is point-slope form, and there's a rearrangement of that, and then the book does a really fancy version of that. And again, the idea here is this is slope of the tangent line, and then all this is is a y value. This is just an x value. So there's really nothing special about this except for all that crazy notation. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is uh, play around with this a little bit, and again, the goal of this is to find the zero. Now, remind you that a zero is the x value, or an x value, uh, that makes the function zero. In other words, that makes y zero. Okay, that is the goal. Okay, so with that in mind, let's uh, do a little substituting, and you can substitute in whichever version you like better. But again, it's the y value that is 0, and then we're going to solve it for the x. Now remember, everything else here is stuff that we know. Okay, so we're going to play around with this and solve this thing for x. Okay, so we're just going to take that and get x by itself. We're going to make a cute little formula here that we're going to be able to use. Okay, so I'm going to uh, subtract y1 from both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by m slope. Okay, so I'm going to flip this around a little bit here. Okay, and then I'm going to add x1 to both sides. Okay, now just take a second and stare at that. I know that went fairly quickly. I'm trying to keep the video short so we can do a couple examples and have you not here all day. Okay, so that is the setup. Now there are lots of different ways to write this. This is what we just did. Uh, now, just remember that we're talking about using a linearization, so that means we're really talking about using derivative, or a slope of the tangent line, and this looks really weird, but this is actually how we're going to accomplish what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to work through two examples and uh, see where we end up, but basically the short version is you're going to use your calculator to use a lot of, do a lot of this. Okay, so. So I'm going to go through the, sh the first example a little more slowly, and then the other example we'll just kind of blaze through to lock in the steps, okay? Okay, so let's get a little picture. Now, this says specifically to find the smallest zero. Okay, let's try and get an idea of what's going on here, and uh, let me pull up the calculator. Okay, so we're going to pull up the calculator, and I'm going to type in that equation that we were just looking at. So that was x to the fourth plus x minus 3. Okay, and we're just going to do a, a pretty standard screen here. And what, the, what this said was find the smallest zero. So the smallest zero is right here. Now, just to get an idea of what's going to happen here. When I, I'm going to make a guess at my x value, okay? Now, I'm looking at this, and it looks like it's somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2. So I'm going to use, I don't know, you could use negative 1.5. I'm going to use negative 1. So what my, cal what my calculations are going to do is we're going to do a linearization at x equals negative 1, and it's going to do something like that. It's going to find the equation of that tangent line. I'm going to substitute zero in to that inequal or to that uh, tangent line, and it's going to find a new approximation. And then, based on that new approximation, we're going to do a new new tangent line, and it's going to get closer to the real zero. Okay. So again, we're going to use negative one as a starting point. 
that's going to be our first approximation, x equals negative 1. And I'm just picking between negative 1 or negative 2, and if you wanted to use negative 1.5, you could do that. Okay. And then I'm going to follow this pattern, or this pattern, which just means to find the next approximation. And the whole idea here is I'm going to do this repeatedly. So x equals x1 is our first approximation minus, now what I have to do is do find the y value at negative 1. So remember, this is just y equals this. So I'm going to put in negative 1. So negative 1 to the fourth plus negative 1 minus 3 equals, well, this is 1 minus 1, so negative 3. Okay, so negative 3 over. And then I need a slope there. Well, to get a slope there, I need y prime. So 4x to the third plus 1, and that's it. So I'm going to put in negative 1 there. So this is going to become negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 also. So this is really negative 1 minus 1 or negative 2. Okay, so my new x value is negative 2. This is actually x2 because this was x1. My first approximation was negative 1. My second approximation was negative 2. Well, I want a better approximation. So I would do it again using negative 2. So negative 2 minus whatever the y value is at uh, negative 2 divided by whatever the derivative is. Oops, sorry, that wasn't supposed to be a negative 1. A derivative is at negative 2. And I would find that, and that would be my next approximation, x3. Okay, well, let's, let's let some cheating happen here. We're going to have the calculator help us out here. Okay, so let's clear some ink. Let's leave that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in y2, the derivative. 4x to the third plus 1. Whoop, back up. Okay, now I know I'm going quickly, and you can hit pause, you can rewind anything you want. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that little setup that I just had, and I'm going to say my first approximation was negative 1. Okay, and I'm gonna, this is where the cheating happens. I'm going to take my last answer, so I put in my first approximation was negative 1. Answer, minus, and I'm going to have the calculator do y1. Okay, now y1 I can get to by doing alpha zoom, I believe. Nope, alpha trace. There it is. y1 of answer. Now this will actually put in that last answer. Now remember I put my derivative in y2. Okay, so I'm going to use alpha trace y2 this time. Okay, okay. of answer. And now watch what happens. Dun, dun, dun. Now what is super cool about this is I can get my next approximation by hitting enter again. And I can hit enter again. Now the problem, ooh, now good, I'm getting decimals. So that's what I wanted. I'm looking for an approximate record to at least three decimal places. Well, I'm seeing uh, 4, 8, 5, 7, I'm seeing 4, 5, 3, I'm going to hit enter again, 4, 5, 2, 6, I'm getting closer, I just keep hitting this until my three decimal places don't change, so it looks like I'm good, negative 1.5426, okay, so the question becomes, okay, Mr. Sanford, what do you need to see, okay, so, what I need to see is the initial setup, which can be something like this, or it can be something like this, or this. I'm good with any of that. And I need, and so the initial setup, I need to see the first answer, and then the next answer, and then the next, an so I need to see all my little answers until I see that decimal place not change. Okay, so what we're talking about is seeing these numbers, and we would just keep listing them. Okay, now I've, they've kind of gone off my screen, and I don't think it's worth going back and getting, but you get the gist. So, one, negative 1.526, 
by 426. Okay, so we would just keep listing them until we get to that one that's not changing anymore. And again, what I'm looking for is three decimal accuracy. So you could call it that, or if you want to call it negative 1.543, that's good too. Um, but that's our approximation. Okay. All right, let's, let's quickly do one more example, same idea, and just recap the steps. I'm following this pattern, so I need y1 to be the original. I need y2 to be y prime, so 3x squared plus 3 in this case. 3x squared plus, all right, so what do we got? x cubed plus 3x plus 1. So x cubed plus 3x plus 1. So we're going to do 3x squared plus 3. Oops. Okay, now, quick little note here. What I'm really trying to do is find zeros. Now, the book, the book, uh, Tests and quizzes and things like that are going to have to specify which zero are we looking for. And so I don't usually want to find all of them. I usually just want to find one of them or maybe a, a two of them or whatever. So this particular graph only has one real zero, so I'm only going to focus on that one. Looks like it's really close to zero. Okay, so I'm going to start at x equals zero. Okay, so again, what we do is start with an approximation. We're just eyeballing the x-intercept then our next x value is going to come from using that first x value minus some y value over the slope. Now, so somewhere I need to see what your first, well, I need to see a setup of some sort. I need to see your first x value and then start listing them. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is type in that same thing that I already typed in. Okay, I'm going to do it again for you. Okay, so I'm going to put in my first zero, my first approximation, and then I'm going to type answer minus y1 of answer divided by y2. And again, I'm doing y2 uh, because that's where my derivative is of answer. You, know, you can do it in the fraction form or not. If you don't do it in the fraction form, then what it'll do is, is uh, list decimals for you. Okay, and there's my second approximation. Okay, so here's my third approximation. Here's my fourth approximation. Now the question is, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for that third decimal place to not change. It's already 3222, 32218, so I'm already there. Okay, so I'm going to write down what I just did. X2 was negative 0.3, repeating. X3 was negative 0.32, repeating. X4, my fourth approximation. Okay, and there's more, but, but again, I'm already getting three decimal place accuracy. Now, the book could ask you for five decimal place accuracy. The test could ask you for 28 decimal place accuracy. It's not going to happen like that. So just kind of watch the directions. Again, sometimes they will ask you for the smallest zero, the one farthest to the left. Sometimes they will ask you for the biggest. Sometimes they will ask you for all of them, and then you find them all. Okay. All right, so again, this is a, an approximation of zeros found by repeatedly using linearization. That's what Newton's method is. All right, that's it. That's all the time we've got. Thanks for watching. Stanford Flip Math. Bye.